Good evening and welcome to Truth Right Back. Today is the 9th of April, 2024. We are day number 100. Can you believe that? Wow. 100 days we've been reading the Bible together. That's exciting. I don't know about you, but that's something to celebrate. <laughs> All right. So tonight we're going to be in first Kings 17 through 19. Beautiful chapters here in, uh, in the book of first Kings. One of my favorite stories tonight, actually. Elijah. The ravens feeding him by the brook. God can do the impossible. Wow. I can't wait to read this to I mean with this is this is a beautiful passage here. So we'll get into Elijah's story and uh let me see verse uh, chapter 18. We're going to continue um with Elijah, pro, uh, challenging the prophets of Baal. Talk about comic relief here. The Bible does have a sense of humor. And you'll see what I'm talking about when he gets there. And then chapter 19, Elijah faces uh, severe discouragement. Wants to die. I never understood that. After he got such a great victory, the, pre the previous chapter, he felt defeated. Very interesting. I want to see what you guys think about that. All right, let's get Mr. S'mores in the house. We got Peter in the house. Guys, today is day number 100. Can you believe that? Mr. S'mores? Good morning. What do you think, Mr. S'mores? Oh, man, you got me. Where'd you get that? I thought I I thought I took all that my film off, off the internet. Let me see who's on. Let me see who's on tonight. Content in Jesus Christ, a.k.a. Saint. Mickey Lee, Michaela, God bless you. Yes, almost one-third of the way through. You're right, Saint, or Content. Ricky Ticky's in the house. Greasy's in the house, Peter. Can you believe that? Greasy in the house. Hi, Greasy. Now, Peter, I have a special request tonight. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you read tonight because I'm in my daughter's room. And she's sleeping. So I'm going to follow with you. And you read and mark. And then I'll interject if I see something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because well, I'm I in my. Oh, she said, hi, sweetheart. Are you talking to Mark? Greasy said, hi, sweetheart. Hello, darling. <laughs> is this a. Uh, Hello, is babe. This a, <laughs> Hello, babe. Does, does he romance in the air? Hello, babe. <laughs> All righty, Peter. Well, Peter, you better put a ring on it before uh, someone else does. The rain? <laughs> what about the leech? <laughs> All right. So let's uh, let's let uh, Peter. Uh, why don't I pray? Since yeah, Peter, you're gonna you're, you're gonna Peter, you're gonna read, right? So let me pray, and then Mark, you have your ESV. I got both, baby. Sweetheart. Peter, you got your you got your King James. Yes, sir. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pray and then turn it over. Kimberly's with us. God bless you, Kimberly. All right, the UN count. No, I, I thought she said the UN Council. No, the UN comic. I like that. The uncomic. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm always thinking conspiracy, guys. You know me. All right. Let's let's pray and we'll get right to it. Hold on one second. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your love. Thank you for letting us get to this point, God, 100 days together without missing a day. Lord, only you can give us that kind of strength and patience, Lord. I know that it's a commitment. 
But what a beautiful thing it is to read your word, God. I pray we can all finish it this year. And thank you for all those who are watching online, who are following on the recordings. I thank you for Peter and Mark, Lord, and for all the Truth Right Back family. Bless the reading tonight, we ask God. Give us wisdom, we pray. Encourage hearts tonight. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Pete and Mark. Let me get the verses on the screen. So, Peter, you're going to be reading uh, the First Kings 17 through 19 tonight. Let me put it on the screen. And I may stop and ask a question or if I see something that, uh, you know, is a little off or different. That's the fun part. Of course, we have three versions we're checking. Mark has the ESV, a little bit more of a modern read. Uh, I've got the uh, Geneva on the screen, the 1560, the precursor to the King James Bible. And then Peter's going to be reading for from the, uh, the 1611 King James. Or should I say 1769, to be fair, because it, it did go through a few modifications before the one we have today. But that's another conversation. All right, Peter, the the, uh, the topic here, Elijah. Elijah, by the way, for those of you, I, I, I have a little trick, guys, a little trick that I... I sometimes get confused with Elijah and Elisha because, you know, which one came first? Well, I have an easy way for you guys, and you'll never forget it. You'll never forget this. Are you guys ready? Okay. Mark, you got your thinking cap on? I got it ready. Okay. In the alphabet, what comes first, J or S? Chicken or the egg? J or S, which one comes first, Mark? I'm going to take a wild guess and say uh, J. <laughs> All right. That's a good one, man. That's a good one. J. So Elijah comes before Elisha. So, Peter, will you remember that now? Yeah. And by the way, people have a conversation which one had more more of God's uh, power or anointing. Well, that's up for debate. I think Elijah was a bad dude. I'm talking like, wow, that guy could, don't mess with him. But Elisha does say he had a double portion of God's, of God's anointing. So it's a good question there. But Elisha came after Elijah. So, all right, Peter, the floor is yours. The intro says, Elijah forewarneth of the famine to come he is fed of ravens he is fed of ravens uh he is sent to zarephath where he restoreth his hostess son to life he brings someone back from the dead not too many people can do that all right peter the floor is yours first kings chapter 17. Thank you, Omar. First Kings chapter 17, verse 1 from the King James Version. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said under said under unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee thence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is, before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise. Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth 
to Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal, and a barrel, and a little oil, and a cruse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus said the Lord of God, so for thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and, and he and, and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said unto Elijah, now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy, thy mouth is truth. I'm uh, I'm a bit thrown off. I thought it was seven times he he went upon the child, uh, you know, to give to breathe life into him. So it was only three times. Uh, Wow, that's weird. So what just happened? Maybe I'm getting it confused with another story. Um, Mark, did you see anything different? No, not at all. I was curious as Peter was reading in um, in verse number. Uh, hold on, when she said, "What have I to do with thee, O thou?" Okay, verse eighteen and nineteen. Mark, what do you have in the ESV on verse eighteen and nineteen? 18 and 19. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? 
You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him upon the upper chamber where he logged and laid him on his own bed. Okay. I was just, I was always kind of curious why she said, what have I to do with thee, O thou man? I must have been something in... Maybe she was trying to say, you know, why, why have you, why, why have you come here? Maybe like, you know, now my son's dead. You yeah, know, what, what Mark said. What do you, what do you have against me? So she's blaming Elijah, the prophet of God, yeah. on on the death of her son. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. And then one miracle there that uh, that we see at the end is that he asked her to make. A little bit of uh, meal for him before she, you know, with whatever she had left, and she did. And then they had enough food for for her, for him, for her son, etc. But it says here in verse fifteen, it doesn't say for how long. It says so she went and did as Elijah said, and she did eat. So did he, Elijah, and her house. For a certain time. It doesn't say how long. Do you guys have any? Many, many days. It just says many days. Peter, what did King James say? Many days, yeah. It doesn't say how long. Huh. A month? A year? How long was it? I'm wondering. All right. Anyhow, I'm trying to figure out why I thought it was seven times that that the... Uh, or maybe it was someone else that came to came to life and they sneezed seven times. Maybe I'm getting the story mixed up. But I, I thought it was this, that it was seven. But anyhow, Elijah goes upon the boy seven, uh, three times. And what's interesting here, Peter, we talk about out-of-body experience. Check this out. Check this out. This is kind of cool, guys. Look what it says in verse 21. Pay close attention to this. It says... And he stretched himself upon the child three times and called unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul, you see that soul, come into him again. It didn't say spirit. It said soul. What do you guys have there in the King James? Child's life. Soul. Life. Okay. What do you have, Peter? Soul. Soul. And remember, we are physical. We are spiritual, we are mental, right? Our mind, our mind, our body, our spirit. Our spirit, by the way, sometimes you're in a good mood, sometimes you're, you're in a bad mood, sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. That's your spirit, right? Um, but the soul is independent of feelings. Jesus said, fear not him who can kill the body, but fear him that, can, that has power over the soul. And so, uh, very interesting, the soul of the child came back in. Very interesting there. Anyhow, that's a whole other study there. One time we were talking about demonic possession, and I was asking, can a Christian be, can a Christian be um, possessed? And they said, the answer was, no, it can't be possessed, but can be oppressed. And I said, well, I thought we were sealed until the day of redemption, right? According to Ephesians 4.30, I thought, you know, nothing can touch us. He said, well, there's, there, that's an interesting question because like you, you, Peter, you can listen to garbage, you know, or watch horror movies all day long. I know Christians that, that like watching, you know, that, that kind of stuff, weird stuff, you know, like all these massacre movies and, you know, people and killers and all that. And I'm like, man, a Christian has no place watching that filth. But you can, you can be, your mind and your spirit can be affected by the stuff that you listen to and the stuff that you watch, even if you're a Christian. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the soul, that's a key point. Your spirit can be, yes, can be oppressed. Your body, obviously, look what happened to Job. You guys read the story of Job. What did the devil do to Job's body? He had sores from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. So physical can be oppressed, mental, your spirit, your mind. Look what happened to King Saul, his mind, he went crazy. But the soul, once we're in the hand of God, once we're in the hand of Jesus, nobody can touch us. John chapter 10, whoever is in the Father's hand, no man can pluck out. 
So four dimensions there. It's an interesting Bible study, but anyhow, just wanted to throw that out there. Okay, the next chapter, very funny. <laughs> very, very funny, Peter. Right. Yeah. Uh, God told the Israelites to march, to walk, to walk around the walls of Jericho seven days. Yeah, but someone sneezed seven times. Look that one up. See if you can find it. Somebody sneezed seven times. I don't know who it was. I thought it was this kid here, but apparently not. You can find it, I'm sure. Anyhow, before Peter reads this, Elijah, Elijah is so funny. Mark, uh, Elijah is obviously a prophet of God, and he goes up against the prophets of Baal. There's, a, I think there's 450 of them. And they're all like, you know, beating themselves across the body and across the head, cutting themselves up, trying to call their God, whoever their God is, right? And nothing happens. And and Elijah says, hey, guys, it's okay. It's okay. Maybe your God's busy. Maybe he's taking a nap. Don't worry. Here, let me call my God. And then you, well, you'll see what happens. But it is so funny. It is so funny. And uh, just watch what happens when God when God's fire comes down from heaven. So Peter chapter 18. I'm sorry. Yeah, chapter 18. Omar, yeah, sneezing, yeah. That's uh, Second Second King Second Kings uh, four thirty five. Elisha got up and walked back and forth across the room once, and then stretched himself out again on the child. This time, the boy sneezed seven times and ah, so similar. To what's happened to Elijah, but a different story. Okay, see, I'm, so I'm not I'm not going crazy. Thank you, Peter. So that's in the next book we're going to read, guys. Thank you very much. I knew I, I knew I read that somewhere. Kimberly says oppressed, not possessed. Correct, Kimberly. Absolutely. I do a lot of deliverance ministry. Amen. Yeah, listen, Kimberly, I'm going to tell you that I don't watch certain things. Um, I used to be very into like, you know, even as a Christian, I used to watch a lot of R rated. I, I take that back. When I got saved, I threw away a lot of my movies. But even like, you know, stuff like that, I, that I used to think was kind of innocent, like, uh, I don't know if you guys ever been to Knott's Berry Farm on Halloween, like not Scary Farm, like that kind of stuff. I know we don't celebrate that, but like I used to, I used to think, oh, this is nothing. It's just fun. No, it's all garbage. It's darkness. It's evil. And even something like that yeah. can latch on to you and, and affect your spirit, your mind and, and oppress you. So everybody be very careful. Every one of you, I don't care if you've been a Christian 20 years, be very, very careful. Even here, I'm going to say something silly and you guys are going to laugh at me. You're going to laugh at me. But even fortune cookies at like um, Panda Express or whatever, I don't read them. And I know you're saying, oh, come on, it's just a cookie. It's, no, I don't want it. To me, Peter, to me, anything that can, that can even be borderline like fortune or divination or anything, I don't want it. Now, you can say, oh, it's just a cookie. Let's just read it. You do it. I'm not going to do it. It's so kind of like going to 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven, <laughs> buying a lottery ticket. Well, divination, fortune telling. Uh, palm reading, tarot cards, uh, you know, tea leaves, all that stuff is from the devil. Yeah, correctly. So, so I never read, you'll never catch me in a million years reading a fortune cookie. I'll eat fortune cookies, but I just, the little paper, I just throw it away. Even though nowadays, I used to, that, that, they, they huh. said you're good looking and so are your friends. <laughs> so I'm going to have to take you off my list. That's all. <laughs> okay. Hello, Wilbur. All right, Mike. So, a little comic relief on never hurts, guys. Speaking of comic relief, Peter, ready for chapter for chapter eighteen? Yeah. All right, one second. I thought you guys would enjoy these chapters. Hold on yeah. one second. I'm sorry if I'm if I'm speaking low. My daughter's asleep here. Okay, Elijah is sent to Ahab. Obadiah hideth an hundred. Ooh, hold on. Obadiah hideth an hundred. An hundred prophets. Elijah killeth all of Baal's prophets, and he obtaineth rain. Remember, there's a drought, so keep that in mind. There's a there's a an interesting part of what Peter's going to read here. I want to see if you guys if if it comes to your mind, but I'm going to say this. Remember, this whole scene takes place during a drought, and let's see what you guys catch here on, during the reading. Okay, Peter, First Kings chapter number eighteen. Take it away. Thank you, Omar, from the King James Version. And it came to pass after the many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show yourself, show thyself unto Ahab 
and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly, for it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said under Obadiah, said unto Obadiah, Go into the land unto the fountains of water and unto all brooks. For a venture we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the, the was in the way, behold, Elijah met him and knew him, and fell on his face and said, "Art art thou that my lord Elijah?" And he answered him, he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned that thou would, wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not, had not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. Peter, I, I just I just wanna I wanna ask you guys real quick. Um, apparently Ahab is looking for the, for the prophets. There's a bounty. There's a bounty on all prophets. I think Jezebel was the one behind it. So Obadiah saying, Elijah, you're telling me to go tell my boss or go tell Ahab that you're here. Don't you realize that Ahab's looking for all the prophets, and you and you want me to go say that you're here, and then when I tell him you're here. How do I know you're really going to be here? Maybe you're you're just telling me to do that and you're not going to be here and then he's going to kill me. I think that's what this is saying. Uh let me let me ask Mark, hold on. Mark uh Can you can you say can from verse 8 Can you read verse 8, 9 and 10 please, Mark? <clears throat> yeah, he said and he answered him, "It is I. Go." Tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, How have I sinned that you would give me your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my Lord has not sent to seek you. And when they would say he is not here, he would take an oath of the kingdom or nation that they had not found you. And now you say, Go. Tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And what does verse 12 say? And as soon as I have gone from you, the Spirit of the Lord will carry you, I know not where. And so, when I come and tell, you, tell Ahab that he cannot find you, he will kill me. Although I, your servant, have, fe have feared the Lord from my youth. Okay, so basically... Sorry to interject, Peter, but Obadiah is, is kind of reluctant. He's saying, you want me to go tell Ahab that you're here? Are you serious? He doesn't believe it. In other words, Obadiah is having a hard time believing this, Peter, because he thinks that that Elijah is not going to be there. But Elijah said, no, go, t go tell Ahab I'm here. So that's what's happening, Pete. All right, let's go back to the, where would you leave off, Peter, 11 or 12? I'll pick it up, uh, I'll pick it up with uh, verse 12. All right, go for it. 
Verse 12, And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee with, whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was I not told, my Lord, what I, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in the cave, and fed them with bread and water. And now thou sayest, Go and tell thy, thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts, hosts liveth before whom I stand, I surely I, I will surely show myself unto him today. And Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and that, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and, and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto the children of, of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto the Mount unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye, halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But of Baal, then follow him. Peter, Peter, I just want to say, I was there in 2012 on Mount, Mount Carmel. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's one of the few places in Israel that's actually still intact because, you know, so much of it has been reconstructed just for, for, for tourism. But uh, to stand there on Mount Carmel is just amazing. And to think that that's where Elijah challenged all the prophets of Baal and said, meet me at, meet, meet me at the mount. Get all your, all your prophets. Bring everybody to the top. I'll meet you there. And then he says, he says, hey, if, if, if God be God, follow him. If Baal be God, follow him. But choose, choose who you're going to go after. And, uh, and so this is where the, uh, the showdown begins. Go ahead, Pete. The end of uh, verse 21, and the people answered him, not a word. Verse 22, then, then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call, in it, call on the name of your gods, uh, but, but put no fire under. And they took the, the bullock, which was given them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal now from morning even until noon saying oh Baal hear us but there is no voice nor any that answered and they leaped upon the altar which was made and it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or peradventure he is sleepeth, and must be awaked. And they cried aloud, and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets. 
till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. Peter, he, Peter, I'm sorry. I, I do want to say something. Uh, I need this. I need to show you guys this. Um, Mark is here also. Hold on. Let me add him. Sorry, Mark. I was so. Mark, by the way, any any changes? Um, no. So far, anything anything different? No, not, not really. Uh, okay, so what they're doing, Peter, he, he's saying, hey, you know, maybe your God's asleep, maybe he's in a meeting, maybe he's, maybe he's um, you know, per pursuing his enemies, whatever, right? Um, so what they were doing, the, the more that he was kind of taunting, taunting them, he was, uh, you know, they got upset. They got upset, and then and then they started literally bang banging themselves on the head, you know. So what I I wanted to share with you a few years ago, I was watching a clip of um. I want to say it's. Hey, let me show this to you. I'm going to show this to you guys real quick. Of these these guys that are self mutilating themselves, and it's not. I mean, it's got a little bloody, but it's not. It's not terribly bloody, but this is a, a certain religion um, in the Middle East. I won't mention the, the religion, but I just want you to watch this just real quick. This is what, what the prophets of Baal were doing. Watch this. Hold on. I'm not, I'm not going to play any sound, but um, it's just these guys flogging themselves. Hold on one second. I want to show you guys this because it is so you can picture what these what these pagan you know, worshipers were doing. Hold on. All right. So there's no sound here, but you can see these guys, what they're doing with this whip. They're, you see how they're beating themselves and it's start, they're starting to bleed on their backs. Can you see that, Mark? Yep. This happens now, 2024. They, it's a certain, it's a certain practice of a, of a sect of, a, you know, in the Middle East. Um, and they do this to appease their God, supposedly. And sometimes they even take sharp instruments and they walk around hitting themselves on the head, on the head, until literally blood gushes out from their heads. And they, nobody dies, nobody dies. But, you know, the, the real men, they say, oh, you know, I can do, I can, I can hurt myself more than, than you can. I and mean, look at these guys, they're, they're, they, they cut themselves. Can you see this? This is happening today, by the way. This is not 2,000 years ago. This is now. So, Anyhow, this is what the prophets of Baal were doing, all in the name of, hey, our God will listen to us. And 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 Elijah's just saying, hey, guys, you know what? Relax. Maybe maybe he's busy. Maybe he's taking a nap. And so so now is when Elijah comes in. And uh, anyhow, I just wanted to show this to you guys. But this is in the name of religion, what you're seeing there on the screen. I don't, have you guys, have you ever seen that, Peter or Mark? No, no. Nope. It's, it happened. I don't, I don't know what it's called, but it's it does. It's a practice. It happens. Even now, every year, it's scary. Very scary stuff people do to to you know to try to be holy or whatever. All right. So going back to the text, thank you, Peter. All right, go ahead. I'm gonna pick it up on uh, verse twenty nine, and it came to pass when midday was passed, and they prophesied until the end of the offering of the even sacrifice that, that there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with his stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the, the wood in order and 
cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said, fill four, fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their back again. Thou hast turned their back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the, bur the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto, ah unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down that the rain stopped thee not. And it came to pass, in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. All right. Thank you, guys. We have Omar, one, one left. Yes, sir. 37. Hold on. At the end. Hold Peter on, actually, Peter. Peter caught it twice. Hold on. 37. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. And let this people know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart again at the last. And you have turned their hearts back. Yeah, King James uh, uh, turned like it, he said it. What do you say? Turn their. Let these people know that thou art Lord, and thou hast turned heart. their heart. Yeah, turn their hearts back. Is the King James says back, Peter? Yeah. Let me look at the note here the on. King James said heart. It's it says has turned their heart back, and I didn't see here. I didn't hear Peter say heart. Oh, listen to the, the comments here, the uh, Geneva translators. They say, though God suffers his or his own to run in blindness and error for a time, yet at the length he calleth them home to him by some notorious sign and work. Amen to that. Um, did you catch how, how God showed up for Elijah and he he fire consumed the offering on the altar. Did you guys catch that? Yeah. And this was look what it says. And the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, verse thirty eight, and the wood and the stones and the dust. And look at this. And licked up the water. Did you guys have you guys ever tried to uh, light wet wood before? 
Have you ever tried to light a wet match before, guys? You got to spin those suckers real hard. <laughs> so God's fire showed up. And here's something I want to say that could be a little controversial, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Um, Pastor Tim's son, Joseph, he um he went to a conference one time and he um he heard a message he heard a message from some evangelist it was like some evangelist guy didn't really hear he didn't he didn't he didn't know the guy's name and make a long story short he preached this message on this chapter that you just read peter and he pretty much just read it the way you did. And then he talked about, he talked about how today's churches, today's churches, I'm talking about, you know, the stuff that, that we, that we see in most churches now, like, uh, the production, you know, it's, it's, it's very different than what it was years ago. I mean, now you go to some of these churches and honestly, I mean, Mark, I haven't been to your church. I know it's a pro- how, many, how many people are in your church, Mark, roughly? At one session? Yeah, on a typical uh, Sunday. I would say, what does he say, like 1,100 or, or 1,500? I'm not sure. That's a, that's a nice size church. Peter at yeah, uh, Metro. Yeah. Metro. He does Metro, four, three, three on Sunday and one on Saturday night. So, Peter, uh, Metro is about what? How many? One service, I'd say like maybe a hundred, maybe. Okay, so it's it's a smaller church. Yeah. It's a smaller church. Everybody knows everybody type thing, right? Yeah. Mine, I would say my church, it's it's got three different ministries. We've got the the English, the Spanish, and the Filipino. I think we run combined on a Sunday between all three ministries. Maybe, maybe twelve hundred. You know, it's it's not overly overly packed. I mean, the pastor is still very accessible. You can come up to him shake his hand, talk to him. You know, it's, it's nice. He knows your, he knows your family, knows your kids' names. I mean, it's nice. I I like, I like a church that's not too big, but anyhow, the message of, and I have to share this with you guys. And I I don't know who the, who the preacher's guy's name, but pastor Tim's son said this to his dad, said, dad, I heard the best message I've ever heard in my entire life. And pastor Tim's obviously a pastor. He said, what, what, what was it, son? What was it? And he said, well, it was this little, little missionary guy evangelist or something and he was telling he read from first kings 18 and he was talking about how churches today they've got all the the show they've got all the like the you know he was talking about the 450 prophets of baal they've got the lights they've got the cuttings and the you know all the the outwardly expression right they got all the stuff right and these are the modern churches that he was comparing it to and he says you can do all this you know, the lights, the concert, the drums, the guitar, the firework, you can do all this. But if God's fire is not present, if God's power is not there, it's all in vain. Like all this, all the lights and the, you know, the speaker and the mega church and, you know, the, the, the rock music. I mean, it's, it literally is like a concert nowadays in most churches. And he says, if the presence of God is not there, all of this is just a show. And then he talked about how Elijah was just him by himself. Just one guy. He didn't have all the fancy stuff. He didn't have, he didn't have, you know, all these people clapping. He didn't have everyone, you know, with bells and whistles, nothing. But guess what? He had power with God and God rained down fire from heaven. And, you know, that, that's basically what happened in the story. But man, if I can get that message, I'll try to get a copy of it. Um, but it was, it was a very, and I did hear the sermon. I did hear the sermon. It was very powerful. So don't be impressed by how big a church is, okay? It doesn't mean that God's presence is there. And, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to mention any any churches specifically, but, you know, you guys can think of some mega churches out there that have thousands and hundreds of thousands of members. That doesn't mean anything to God. It means nothing to God. God's power, God's not impressed by numbers. Anyhow, I just wanted to share that with you. We have one more chapter here in uh, 19. Chapter 19, guys, hold on. Let me turn this up. I was just thinking about that the other day. Actually, yesterday uh, on Sunday, I saw Joe, and I was like, hey, what, what was the name of that message? I'll see if he can remember it. Okay, chapter 19, Elijah fleeing from Jezebel is nourished by the angel of God. 
he is commanded to anoint Hazael, Jehu, and Elisha. Apparently, he falls into some kind of depression here. I don't know why. I mean, he just came to do this victory, right? God's power rained down, but he falls into some kind of depression here. I want to see what you guys think about that. All right, go ahead, Peter, chapter 19. Thank you, Omar, from the King James Version, verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and it came to Beersheba which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. But as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake bacon on the coals and a cruse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Herob, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What dost thou hear, Elijah? Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And, be and behold, the Lord passed by in a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave and behold there came a voice unto him and said what dost thou hear elijah and he said i have been very jealous for the lord god of hosts because the children of israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword and i even i only am left and they seek my life to take it away and the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abelmahola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it came to pass that him that escapeth the sword of, of Hazel, Hazael, um, shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, and the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth that hath not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, 
who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was the 12th. And Elisha passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elisha and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Amen. Wow. Tonight's tonight's reading was, was a wow, guys. Wow. I mean, it's just so much. Elijah, Elisha. And uh, I just saw that. So he was depressed because he found out he was the only prophet left. And then Jezebel basically said, hey, because you killed our prophets, our 450, before the day's over, you're going to be as dead as they are. So, wow. Yeah. That's why he was depressed. He just felt defeated, I guess, you know, and Jezebel was not someone that you wanted to have on, on your bad side. You know, Omar, mm -hmm. Jezebel, she wasn't somebody that you wanted on your good side. Right, right. That's true. Yeah, very true, brother. Wow. Mark, uh, you're kind of quiet. Anything, uh, anything different? Anything we missed? No, everything was, it's, Pretty, pretty same, pretty much the same. No issues. No. Maybe the next chapter they'll, they'll get a new batch of uh, translators. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Amazing how it switches. All of a sudden, boom, it switches and a lot, lot different. Mm hmm. <laughs> pretty crazy stuff. Well, guys, uh, day number 100. We definitely had, had a lot of action here today. All right, Pete. Um, I did have something here. Hold on. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I wanted to see if I could uh, show you guys something real quick here. What time is it in Israel, uh, Mark? Can you find out right now? I think it's nine hours ahead. Let me see. Can you find out what time is it in Israel? I'll tell you right now. <coughs> Eight forty-eight a.m. Early on Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Well, check this out. I was trying to get a live stream. I couldn't find one, but this is a. A replay of uh, Mount Carmel. Can you guys see that? Mount Carmel. And it's uh, kind of lo looks over the water. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You guys see that? That's Mount Carmel. And uh, that's in Haifa, Israel. Haifa. 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 Look at that, guys. Pretty cool. So that's what that's where it took place, and it's still there. I mean, it's obviously you know it's a mount. You can't it's a mountain. You can't you can't uh, fake it. <laughs> a lot of the other stuff is fake. I mean, it's it's all like like uh, Universal Studios. You know, as you walk through the old streets, they're not really they're not really. I mean, a lot a lot of the stuff that you see, the touring stuff, it's all been um, made for for show. But but obviously, like the Sea of Galilee, that's real. Mount of Olives, that's real. Mount Carmel, that's, you know, that hasn't changed. But very beautiful place. I miss it, man. The food was excellent. But I, I, I ate shawarmas every day, Mark. Really? Shawarmas, falafel, cucumbers. Oh, man, the food was amazing. Making me hungry. Oh, it was, it was good stuff, man. I'm telling you, I wish I can go back. Hey, for you, burnt uh, hubcaps is, uh, you know, is there anything <laughs> 
Oh, man. All right, man. So it, it was good tonight. Let's see who. Oh, Reigns. God, Reigns showed up. Yeah, he was in the house. Yep. All right, let's see what happened here. <clears throat> wow, we had a lot of people on tonight, guys. Praise the Lord. Saint, Judy, Ricky Ticky, Greasy, Kimberly. Uh, who else? But Ricky Ticky, Ricky Ticky's on. Brother Ken, Rain's in the house. Who else? Uh, Ralph. Hey, praise the Lord, brother Ralph's in the house. We had some new new people. We're going to be on. Hopefully, uh, Ricky Ticky's brother. He's driving mm -hmm. back to Sacramento. Wow. We're going to try and get on. Well, praise the Lord, guys. Well, thank you, everybody, for it's seven forty eight a.m. says uh says uh Saint. Thank you, uh Saint. She's always on. It's almost eight a.m. Yep. All right, Pete. Well, why don't we close out in prayer? Day day number one hundred, guys. After today, I'm telling you, it's cruising. We're just going to cruise through the Bible. Something about the hundred days. Just the first hundred days are the toughest. From here on out, it's just one big party. Those are the cooks. <laughs> All right, Bride. Take it away. Um, Omar. Yes, sir. Uh, so I have a little bit of a challenge. With, yes, sir. I have a little bit of a challenge with the the uh, tail end of Rain's uh, prayer. Okay. Well. Uh, Brother Rain, I'm sure he gets all these prayers from, he has a, uh, he has a book that he gets them from. Uh, a so. A little bit of a challenge, uh, Omar. It says, uh, at the tail end, it says, we acknowledge one, one baptism for the remission of sins. Baptism does, does not have anything to do with the remission of sins uh when you said that when you said that for some reason my 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 attention was drawn to ephesian and let me show this to you guys real quick maybe this is where maybe this is where it's going hold on ephesians chapter four catholic, check this out catholic yep ephesians four let me read it to you guys real quick it's on the screen. So this is the unity chapter, Ephesians 4. I'm thinking maybe this is where the prayer may be from. I'm not sure. But I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Um, maybe that's where it's going. I'm not yeah. sure. Well, no. Well, that's 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 wonderful. That's beautiful. But but it says we acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin. Well, that's what verse five says: one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It doesn't say baptism for the remission of sins. The baptism does not have anything to do with the remission of sins. Right. It's, Very, it's only the work that it was done on the cross. Correct. It's correct. Yeah. Well, that that's a good that's a good point that you brought up. I can appreciate that. I know that the. Uh, our, our dear friend Mickey, I won't mention his last name. He's not on. He's from the Church of Christ, and they their doctrine states that you can't get saved unless you're baptized. And so anyone anyone who goes to a Church of Christ, uh, their their big thing is baptism, and without baptism you can't get you can't get into heaven. And they'll tell you that. I've talked to pastors of churches, and I've asked them, "Hey, what happens if I get saved, but I didn't get a chance to get baptized? Will I go to heaven?" And he looked me in the eye and said, "Nope." No, you won't. Yeah, that's not the and case. I, yeah, so I'm not sure where that prayer came from, but I'm thinking, you know, that's a good point you brought up. Baptism is definitely not, and anything we do, not only baptism, but reading the Bible, going to church, doing good deeds, 
helping little old ladies cross the street, changing someone's tire, you know, making Mark a pineapple upside down cake. None of those doesn't matter what you do. Any time you start saying that you have to do stuff in order to get right with God or get saved or go to heaven, that now becomes works based, human based. And that's basically what all religions teach that man can man can make his own way to heaven. And and the Bible teaches there's only one way to heaven, and that's what Christ did on the cross. So, but very good, Peter. I'm glad you, you mentioned that. I'm sure Brother Rain didn't mean anything by it, but, you know, it's all good. It's a good, it's a good, uh, I think it's a good study. <coughs> but thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Oh, okay. He gave you an answer, Pete, right there in the chat. Kimberly says, too many misinterpretations. Yeah. Catholics after orthodoxy use this prayer. Well, Peter and I share something in common with Mark. Mark doesn't. Uh, Mark, Peter and I used to be Catholic, so. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> yeah. And I was not Catholic by, by choice. I was just born into it, guys. So. I really don't. Uh, it wasn't something that I that I picked. It chose me. But anyhow, I, and and by the way, Peter, I'm going to say something kind of controversial here. But I, I believe that Catholics, there's some Catholics that didn't like me who don't know better. And I didn't know better, but they truly love God and truly know the truth. Now, maybe they weren't taught like, like we are right now. You know, we read the Bible and, and nothing but the Bible. But uh, I, I think when, when we get to heaven, we'll be really surprised who made it there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I truly believe that there's some really good. And when I say good, I mean, I know that there's none righteous, no, not one. I understand that. But I'm, I'm saying well-meaning. There's well-meaning Catholics who, who truly put their, their faith and trust in Christ. And they just didn't know. No one ever taught them. And no one ever showed them. And Paul said, how should we know without a preacher? How should we hear without a preacher? So, you know, at the end of the day, Pete, um, you know, there may be some Catholics on right now listening to us. And they, they didn't know about, you know, all this stuff about baptism or whatever or good works. But here, here's, here's a million dollar question. At what point do you truly get saved when you become a quote unquote you know, Baptist or Pentecostal or whatever denomination. I mean, when do you, it's not a denomination that saves you, Pete. It's, it's your heart for what the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So, you know, it's not, not nothing that, that we put on ourselves as titles can get us to heaven. It's, it's really about the heart. Romans chapter 10, uh, verses, uh, eight, nine and 10. Talk about that. Anyhow, Omar, Omar, content, content in Jesus Christ. She says, uh, and we cannot be delivered from all unrighteousness. That's true. We're, we're, we are, we are in this fallen world. We're in this fallen world. It's, it's not possible to be delivered by, delivered from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Yep. We sin every day. I remember, I, I remember we used to have a guy who came on our chat. And he would say, oh, you guys teach that you, you're still sinners. And I'm like, yeah, we're still sinners. Remember that guy? What was his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Some uh, cow, cow, cowboy dude. I forgot his name. But yeah. he stopped He stopped listening because he, he, you know, we kept talking about how, you know, all, all I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. He's like, no, I don't sin anymore. I said, oh, really? Anyhow. You're the one, huh? <laughs> okay. For with the heart, Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart. All right, Pete. Well, why don't you pray for us and uh, sinners with a Savior. Amen, Kimberly. Okay, Bright. Well, thank you for the uh, lesson on baptism. Mm, yeah. I almost, I almost married I almost married a girl who was in the Church of Christ. That would have been interesting. What was her name? I forgot her. Oh, Emily. I don't think I met Emily. 
No, no, it it, it it is it didn't work out. Wait a minute, how could you almost marry Emily and I didn't even meet her? I I don't even remember hearing about her. She was I didn't want <laughs> I didn't I didn't I didn't feel I didn't feel she was uh I didn't I didn't think it was the right it just didn't work out. But you you almost married her and I don't I haven't even like heard of her? Yeah. Yeah, well, she used to come to my our Bible studies back when I lived in uh, at the house in uh, West Hills. I don't remember. You, you never met her, no. Anyhow, Church of Christ didn't work out, and I didn't. You know, I was. Remind I was. Me, remind me about that, Omar. When 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 I see you, I'll, I got one for you. Okay. So so you were you were keeping her under wraps. I was. I was. I have never heard about some Emily girl before. Yeah. Oh, Kimberly says my sister lives in West Hills. Amen. Tell her to come visit us at my church, Faith Baptist. Come visit us oh, one day. Tell her to go meet Emily. I don't know where Emily is. Who knows? West Hills. Yeah. <laughs> oh, All boy, right. That, huh. that, was, that was a nice house. It was a beautiful house. Man, I can't believe I sold it. It's okay. I have a mansion in heaven. And by the way, Peter, you know, all the stuff we talk about, like owning houses and being financially secure and all that, the more I read about the Levites and how they had no inheritance, but God was their inheritance, I think about, like, what do we really hold on to in this world? You know what I mean? Like, all the stuff that we have, what does it matter? How many houses or cars or possessions or 401ks or... All of us are going to die. Ten, 10 out of 10 people die, Pete. That many? 10 out of 10. Out of 10. That's, 10 that's, out of, that's the ratio? That's that 10 many. out of 10. Well, not exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about? One? The one? There there were two that were no more. Yeah, Elijah. No, no, Um, Enoch. Yeah. Yeah. But he'll he'll die he'll die one day. There's a point that a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. So he'll eventually die. I think that that's with the whole two witnesses thing. We'll get into that revelation. Kimberly, we'll pray for your sister. She's a yogi. That's okay. You know what? God can just keep praying for her. All right, bride. Let's bring it home. Yes, yes, yes. Um. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back and see what what we can um, salvage. What we can salvage from the prayer. I'm trying to find that. Okay, here we go. Yeah. It's interesting, Omar, being raised Catholic, right? Yeah. Yeah. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of the heavens and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of the world, a very God, a very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the, of the Holy Ghost. and the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again 
with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And, the, and in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who spake by the prophets, and in one holy church, we look and we look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Yeah, I, I remember having this is the Apostles' Creed. I remember having to memorize the Apostles' Creed for um, a sacrament. Um, what was that? What was that sacrament? Uh, There's baptism, communion, uh, confession, communion. Yeah, I remember having to memorize the Apostles' Creed. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, and we thank you for this time of fellowship. I pray that you continue to give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us direction, lead, lead, lead our steps, give us joy, give us peace that transcends all understanding. Fill us with Holy Spirit. Continue to fashion and mold our hearts. Father, I thank you for Brother Omar. I pray for his family. I thank you for Mr. Schmores, Brother Mark. I thank you for Dots. I thank you for little Mia. I thank you for Anita, the Shubin family. I I pray that you continue to do a work in the Shubin family. I thank you for our friends that are in fellowship with us. And I thank you for, for giving more faith with all of us. I thank you for encouraging our hearts. I thank you for allowing us to come before your your mighty throne to renew our minds daily by the washing of the word. I pray for those that are able to find our channel, that they too will be strengthened, that their hearts will be stirred and their hearts would be turned towards you. I pray that you Give us the desire to love you more with all of our hearts. To love our neighbor as ourself. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, what's a wrap, gentlemen? Great job. And ladies. Thank you, all, all of you. Jesus did have brothers and sisters. Yes, we know. That's good. Good call, uh, content. Awesome. Well, Mr. S'mores, I didn't ask you this, but uh, how's the weather over there? Right now, it's 70. Nice. Warming up, I, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. 88 today. Peter, why don't I know you used to go out to Palm Springs a lot to vacation. Or Palm Desert, I forgot. But next time you go out there, just, we should go pay a mark a visit. Cobbler. Yeah. It's very possible, too. I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll go We'll go visit you, Mark. It's pretty out there. My friend went on a retreat uh, to Joshua... What Joshua was it? Tree? Josh, Joshua yeah. Tree. How far is that from you? That's uh, Joshua Tree's about from here, about a half hour, four, five minutes. He said it was beautiful. He said it was yeah, absolutely like beautiful. It's like Big Bear. Wow. Yeah. Well, they got a big Air Airbnb. They had like 20 people in there. It was awesome. Yeah. We'll do something like that. Well, guys, let's start thinking about what we'll do at the end of the year to celebrate. 
I know last year we didn't. We were supposed to go to Hawaii. What happened to that? I don't know. Let's do we something fun. We all got a place right there, baby. <laughs> right? Pacific s'mores right on the water. There we right go. In. Right there. <laughs> that's it. Oh, man. That's funny. Do you want the east side or the west side? We know who's driving that. <laughs> All right, Mr. S'mores, you guys have an awesome night, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Good read tonight, everybody. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Yeah.